Have you ever wondered what do blockchain and data analytics have to do with each other? Today in Career in Blockchain, I'm speaking to Freddy, who is one of the founders of AnyBlock Analytics, and he will tell us how to use data analytics in blockchain by describing practical use cases. So hi, Freddy, and welcome to Career in Blockchain. It's super great to have you here, especially because you're the expert for data analytics and blockchain. And today I would like to talk to you exactly about that, this intersection. So can you please introduce yourself and tell us how did you get into blockchain? Thanks, Maria, for having me. And uh, yes, I'm happy to be here. Uh, so my name is Freddy Zwanska. I'm co-founder and chief data officer of AnyBlock Analytics. Uh, we are a German blockchain uh, company, and uh, basically my journey into blockchain started in 2015 when uh, my co-founder and longtime friend uh, Peter told me about this thing, Ethereum, and this cryptocurrency that might change the world, that might make uh, national currencies, fiat currencies obsolete, and that sounded pretty interesting, pretty crazy too, it hadn't even launched yet. Um, I vaguely heard about Bitcoin before, but not really uh, gone into deeper into that at all. Back, back in the days, I had um, sold some, some of my shares uh, from my previous career in an internet agency, and I wanted to invest that money into um, other startups and entrepreneurial things. And so I, I had set aside basically 10 buckets of investment. Uh, that I did with crowdfunding uh, stuff uh, in like seed match in the early days and other platforms. And um, then I, I thought, okay, well, I might, might just allocate one of those buckets to this crazy cryptocurrency thing, because I mean, it sounded crazy. It sounds much like a startup that 90% it fails, but there is a chance that it grows tremendously. And so I figured that would be, that would be, a, you know, okay investment into that, sort of portfolio bucket. And so I did it and uh, yeah, the rest is history. I fell down the rabbit hole. Um, as you are invested into, into the cryptocurrency, you, you automatically read and follow it and, and get drawn into it. And obviously back then it was a very, very small community. It still is, but um, so it was easy to keep track and get excited and getting to know more about it. And that's how it started. Great. So you're a, one of the Ethereum pioneers because actually Ethereum was like officially announced, I think, in 2015. Yeah, actually, I mean, I, I wouldn't call myself a pioneer because back then I just bought some and I actually had to wait because uh, back in the days, like at the ICO, you could only buy it with a command line interface wallet, right? So like typing like a developer and I, I'm not a developer, so I can't do that. And uh, I, I told uh, my friends, uh, you know, I, I kind of buy this stuff. And this, he told me about it, like, oh, well, then I can't buy. And so I had to wait until it was listed uh, at Kraken, actually, uh, then so that I had some graphical user interface where yeah. I can click and <laughs> do the thing, right? Um, because, you know, this intersection data analytics blockchain, um, these are two of the biggest trends of, of today. Okay, and can you tell us what exactly your company does? Uh, yes, sure. Um, so we're providing infrastructure and data and tools for what we call crypto natives. So people that are already in the crypto space. Uh, back in the days, we also targeted um, enterprises, but they're just too slow in adoption. That's what we found, at least for us as a startup uh, to survive. Um, so right now, sometimes uh, to our investors, we, we, we say that um, we're selling shovel to the gold diggers, right? So, um, and that's always, we don't need to know where the gold is or which, which gold is the best or should you mine gold or silver or not, but we're providing the tools and the infrastructure. So there's basically three products to that. Number one is the infrastructure aspect. If you wanna talk or interact with the blockchain, you need a blockchain node. And much like with the internet, you have your ISP, your internet service provider, um, that you that you pay for your internet connection, you can pay us uh, software as a service model to connect to the blockchain. That's number one, very basic, very commoditized uh, infrastructure. So I do not have the node, you have the node which connects yes. to the blockchain. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have an application or a wallet and you wanna read the, read the blockchain or write the blockchain, doesn't matter, but you need 
you need to interface with the network and that's what we provide. Mm -hmm. And obviously over the internet, that's the you know, prerequisite of that. But so that's, that's that. Then the second one is if you, if you do a lot of things over this node and talk with the blockchain and write an application, let's say a, 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 a DAP or, or something, then you realize that the technology wise, this interface or this connection is not very fast and all the, all the data is uh, in hexadecimal format. It's not, not human readable and that kind of thing. So the second thing that we offer is we index those uh, these, the blockchain data and, and put it in an indexing stack. So in a regular database that you can query directly or via our API with existing tools and programming languages. And, and like, so every developer that knows how to develop, they can talk with the blockchain because they don't have to deal with the blockchain. We abstract away the blockchain. And we also index the blockchain. So we have a caching mechanism that makes the access, particularly in reading, much faster um, and much more easy. And also we translate in the process, we translate that raw data, this technical ma machine data that is like, you know, A, B, C, one, two, three. And then we make, uh, we decode it and it says transfer ether from this address to this address. And that, that way you can actually read it and make mm -hmm. sense of it and, and do calculations and display it in your app and stuff like that. So that's the, the second uh, product. Okay. And the past uh, few months, I'm buying NFTs or I'm looking into that. And I started tracking the addresses, the Ether addresses of some successful investors. So I know what mm -hmm. they're buying and where their money is going to. And maybe with your technology, I can extract this data and make it more like user-friendly to read or to understand. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay, that, so that, that would be, would be a, a use case for me as someone that is um, yeah, looking at that. Would definitely, that would definitely be a use case. So, I mean, everybody, um, so everything on the blockchain is public, on the public blockchains yeah. to be exact, but so it's, it's more or less public. And if you can make sense of it, let's say with our help, then it's like an open book. So you can really look into someone's portfolio, someone's spending, now, the difficulty, obviously, is to put a name next to that address. So you have to know which address you want to look for, because mm -hmm. there's obviously millions and millions. Um, but if you, if you do know that, and you don't have to know the name, you just have to know that this address is active in NFT, then, yes, you can, you can do that. And that's exactly what, what people use us for. But there's other examples as well. So uh, to give you another example, um, if you deploy a smart contract on the blockchain, so some code that is a product, really, a software product, mm -hmm. uh, then as a product manager, you might want to know which of these functions that you're offering is used the most, or how many people actually deployed a version of your software. Uh, if you talk smart contract wallets or something like that, how many times has this been replicated? To see, yeah. to to show some growth numbers and and uh, improve the product and this kind of thing. So this could be a more an, an, an internal use case for for these uh, companies that, that develop yeah, some, some some product. And that's what we call we're the Google Analytics for blockchain, right? Because everybody uses Google Analytics for their website, for their blog, for the e-commerce store to gather insights what people are looking at and using and stuff. And that's the same for for blockchain. And that could be another use case, just to give one example. Great, great. Okay, and what's the third one, the third service? Um, so the third, the third pillar basically is um, that we're providing tools. So this data is in the database, but you can also do magical things with it. So we build a couple of those tools. Number one, a block explorer. So that you can see what, uh, what the blockchain is, what transactions are in a block, what transaction did it go from A to B, what tokens were involved, this kind of basic information, that would be one. Another product that we build is a, a universal search. So it searches across different blockchains. We're indexing over 20 different blockchains. And if you have a transaction hash and you're not sure on what blockchain that actually happened or what you're looking at, then you use that search and it searches automatically across all these different blockchains, right? And thirdly, we have a, a dashboard uh, product where we build public dashboards for some network metrics, token metrics, um, any specific uh, products or projects that, that you know, we provide some data. So we, we, we gather the data from our index, from our nodes and, 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 and pool, and then we produce nice looking charts so that even you know, you, to visualize the data that we have and show what is possible, basically. We, we're not making money with that, 
but a lot of people are interested in that because it's more tangible than the abstract notion of we have all the data of 20 yeah. different blockchains, right? That's it's sure. too, too abstract. So that's why we showcase it in that way. And, and also, this is also some service that we're offering if some projects want to gather, let's say, their intelligence for their smart contract, then we can build a dashboard for them because they nobody has enough time or resources to, you know, to do it and then we can help. And I know you have a more of a finance background, but now you're doing something very um, data focused and maybe more of an IT focused. Um, how did you manage to, to do this switch? Um, that was actually rather easy. I think um, the blockchain space is very open for, because it's so new, right? Like nobody is really a, a crypto native. Um, so you know, the, the, everybody is coming from different uh, sections of life, being it uh, obviously developers, um, engineers, um, but also people from finance because the financial industry is obviously the, the first to adopt or to be majorly disrupted by the technology. But there's also marketing people, business people. Uh, obviously then as, as companies scale, you need you know, accountants, you need HR people. So it's really not that difficult um, to, to get into it because um, yeah, if you, if you learn quickly and uh, enjoy doing that, uh, then it's, it's really open. And I was always working at the intersection of, uh, let's say development and marketing, like I was project manager at an internet agency. So I was always, you know, translating back and forth from what the marketing department wanted for the website or the e-commerce shop to the developers that needed to program and, and design the stuff. And that's a skill if you can translate between different groups of people that is that will always be in high demand. And that is very much so in crypto as well. Okay, great. Can you tell me more about the team um, that uh, you currently work with? And I know that you're also looking for new people. So maybe you can say something about that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we're growing rapidly. We're now 16 people from, uh, well, not exactly around the world. We're European centric in the broadest sense, just to keep it easy on the time zones. But we're an all remote company. So we're decentralized, if you will. Uh, so we don't have a, an office. Uh, everybody mm -hmm. is working from home or from wherever they want, really. It doesn't matter. We have some people that are traveling around a lot. Um, but so we are a remote team. Um, and this is probably about half to two thirds are engineers. So both developers and DevOps people. So people that take care of the servers. We obviously have a lot of servers to take care of. Um, uh, and so that's the one half and the other half is business and business is also sort of close to technology. Like we have data scientists, we have uh, a technical writer that produces the documentation and, and tutorials so that people you know, can use our products. Uh, but we also have a marketing person, accounting, you know, the usual stuff. So, and we're growing rapidly. And uh, if you want to apply, check out anyblockanalytics.com slash careers. Uh, there you can find all our open positions and profiles. Also, if it doesn't fit, you can uh, send us an email if you think you're a great fit anyway. Um, so we're very open for enthusiastic people, but they should bring some experience in whatever field they're working on. So that is uh, essential for us as a remote first company that everybody knows what they're doing and we don't need to micromanage uh, and teach people because we're not, we don't have enough manpower to, to really teach people their jobs. We obviously get you into blockchain, so you don't necessarily need to have a lot of experience in blockchain technology or cryptocurrencies, but um, for your basic uh, skill, basically, as a developer or as a data scientist, you should bring in some experience. But then uh, doors are wide open, and we're looking forward to, to hearing from everybody. Great. Thank you, Freddie, for uh, this conversation. And uh, thank you for being uh, on Career in Blockchain. Sure, welcome. Thank you for watching. If you want to hear more experts talking about their careers in blockchain, then subscribe to this channel and check out the rest of our interviews.